Hi, I'm Michael Laurie. I'm here at uh, Vashon Co-Housing. And uh, Diane Emerson and I um, actually made a visit here to consult with them on different ways that they could uh, control the storm water on site. One of the things that we saw a fair amount of is the downspouts, as many houses have. And you know, some of the downspouts were just pouring water on the ground. But this one is great because it takes the water and puts it into this storm drain system here. There's a storm drain system out here where it, it takes a lot of the storm water and puts it into the forest, which is a great way to deal with your storm water. And you really do want to get it away from the foundation of your house because the water could uh, damage the foundation. You know, some of the stormwater solutions that you can uh, do at your home maybe take a fair amount of money or work. This is one of the more simple things, and the idea here is that this storm drain catches water that runs from up the hill here and, and should make it to the drain. <clears throat> and then once it goes in there, it, I believe it exits out into the forest, which is a great place to put the stormwater. The challenge is to make sure that the pathway of the water is open enough for the water to make it. When we were here earlier in the year, it was kind of muddy and some of the water was getting diverted by different things, so it wasn't even making it to the drain. And now it, it has a good open pathway to make it to the drain, so it's, it's going to it's going to end up that the storm water will go where we want it and also this whole area here will look a whole lot nicer. It won't be kind of muddy anymore. Now I've moved further down slope from that drain. Not all the water that's uphill by the drain goes into it. Some of it comes right on down here and when we were here before, a few months back, it kind of created a, a muddy spot here and it, it, it was kind of, you know, a little unpleasant. Storm water was causing a little trouble. So I recommended that, we, that they put in this little water bar. It's just a simple little bump in the trail. And you would think, how could that do much? Well, Mark Music, who lives here, said and in fact has helped. And I think that's partly because you don't get huge volumes of water coming down here. But the idea is that it hits the bar and then it goes down this drainage here into the forest where we want it to go. So this is another example of a simple, low-cost way to uh, deal with stormwater on your property. We're going to look at a, a rain barrel here. So notice that it comes off of the downspout. It dumps the water here on top of the rain barrel and there's a hole through the top of the barrel with a screen so that insects can't get in there. So the water comes in there and it's got this nice decorative co co cover, which is really cool, I think. You have two ways that you get at the water here. One, you know, down here, I'm gonna open that, yep, see, you could fill a bucket down there. And then up here, I think this is the overflow, and it's got a hose connected, and then you can direct the overflow to a place where the plants need more water, ideally away from the foundation of the house. This is a cool uh, new garden at Sarah's home, and uh, you can see up here, it circles around. There's this beautiful bed of plants. And as it circles around, you come to one area here where there's a drainage down to a storm drain, and there's all these rocks here, which is great. Why is that great? Because the, hitting the rocks is gonna slow the water down, and it's gonna probably force it to drop some sediment that it has. So it'll get to the storm drain in a more reasonable volume and speed, which is what we want. We want to slow things down with storm water control. 
And then there's another flow that could come here and it's hitting this deal. What the, what is that? Well, it's a, it's a burlap bag and it's stuffed with, I think like uh, mulch maybe, wood chips. Well, what we're trying to do is again, slow the flow down and this will filter it. So by the time a lot of the water gets to the other side, it will have filtered out a lot of the sediment. That's another great thing we want to do with these stormwater measures on site. We're going to slow it down. We want to filter it. And this is this homemade waddle that you could also make at your house. Okay, here we are at another house at Co-Housing on Vashon. And I just like this really cool little water chain they've got going. So basically some of the water in the downspout and goes down here and when if, if it was raining it would be overflowing each of these and creating this beautiful fountain effect. And then the water uh, comes and, and feeds all these plants in this bed. So the stormwater stuff, we want to talk about how that it can also be beautiful. Not only are you doing something to control the stormwater, but you can make it a beautiful thing. And that's what they did here. Notice this downspout up here. It dumps the water onto that little tray area. But unfortunately what happens is the water it, at least it runs away from the foundation, so it doesn't cause trouble there. But it comes down here and creates a big mud pool, and it makes it really hard then to walk through here into the other garden area. And so it ends up being kind of a mess. <clears throat> and the solution would be the following. To change that downspout, have a 90 degree in it, and have it connect to the wall of the house there, and then connect to the side of the deck. And then it drops down into on to the ground here and goes along the ground and exits through the fence to the other side because on the other side there's blueberries and they love having a lot of water. We can take this water that's creating a muddy mess in the winter and create a solution and in that we're gonna have blueberries that are happier. I'm standing next to a drainage ditch that drains a big area by the road coming in to co-housing. Co-housing, from a water drainage standpoint, co-housing is pretty cool on, in terms of Ashland because it is where some of Shingle Mill Creek begins, which is called the Headwaters, and it's also at the Headwaters for the other major stream on Vashon, Judd Creek. So, this ditch, uh, the water comes out and it, we'll see later, it goes along the road and it eventually goes right into Shingle Mill Creek. And this ditch does kind of act like a rain garden because the water goes along and it, it sinks in to the ground. And the appropriate thing here is a little tricky and it requires sort of regular observation. And what I'm saying is, you want the water to move along, but you don't want to clear this out so much that it speeds along, which could then cause erosion and put a lot of sediment into the shingle mill. On the other hand, you don't want to have so much growing in this ditch that it slows down so much that it would flood. This is the next section of that same drainage ditch. It goes along the entry road. It hits another ditch on Bank Road and then goes right into Shingle Mill Creek. This is sort of a thing that's a good thing to ask yourself. Where does my water go from my property? That's really helpful to know in, in terms of trying to play a good role in controlling the stormwater. <laughs> 